All right, welcome back for the next problem. We're going to be looking at example four now, which is still using our future value and uh, present value and all those different terms. But now the question, though, is going to be looking for something a little different. So in the previous problems, remember, we were looking for future value. Now the question wants you to find the present value for each future amount. So there's a slight twist to how we're going to tackle this problem. So they're saying, okay, the future value is 2000. We have 4% simple interest and it's for six years. So what would we do? Now we're still linking together the future and the present. So we still need that formula, but be careful. This one wants the simple interest one. So we want A equals P times one plus RT. Now, what do we know? Be careful, we know the future. So the future is 2000 and that replaces A. We don't know the present, that's what we're trying to find. So we're trying to find P. And so 4% is 0 0.04 times six years. So we can write it in a six. So now we have this equation and we're missing P. So we just need to do what next? Well, we better simplify this stuff in parentheses first. So if we multiply that, that's going to give us 0.24. And if we add one, that's going to give us 1.24. So our equation boils down to 2000 equals P times 1.24. Well, how can we get P by itself? We can actually divide by it, right? If you're multiplying by something and you want to undo it, we can divide by it. Now I'm going to flip the two sides just because it's easier to write a longer number on the other side. So 2000 divided by 1.24. So 1612.9. Yeah, it looks like it's going to stay at zero. So the way to interpret this is that if I deposited $1,612.90 at one point in time, and then I waited six years with a 4% simple interest rate, I would end up with $2,000 in six years. So whatever you think about that, is it good or not? Okay, so simple interest is not as bad because you got a little bit more simple equation. But remember, if we're compounding, that's when it gets a little bit yuckier. So let's see how this one would work. So it's compounded. So we know we have to use A equals P times 1 plus R over M to the N. So let's see if we can plug in some of these numbers. Now the 9,860, that is our future. So again, that replaces A. We don't know what P is. R is 8%, so 0 0.08. M, what's M? So remember, M is always the number of compoundings per year. So if it's compounded semi-annually, that means that M equals 2. So we got 2 for our M, and then N remember, is always oops, m times t. So 2 times 10, which is 20. Well, we still got to do the same thing we did up here. We got to simplify the parentheses and find out what that number is next to the p. So let's do all that. Well, 0 0.08 divided by 2 should be 0 0.04. So 1 plus that would be 1.04 raised to the 20th. So let's see what that equals. 1.04 raised to the 20th equals a yucky decimal. So we get 9820 equals P times 2.191123. One, four, three. Okay, I'm going to show you 
the way that we we're currently doing it, but I'm going to show you another little trick that you might be able to, that you might like a little better. So same as we did up here, once we got that number down, we had to divide by it. So we had to divide by this whole mass. So we got P is equal to 9860 divided by 2.19112314. All right. So we need, I got to put that first number on top though. So 9860 divided by 2.19112314. So we got $4,499.90. Well, the 5 is next to it. So that's going to bounce that 7 up to an 8. So almost $4,500. Now, a trick. If you don't want to have to write all that and type it all out into your calculator again and again, here's a trick. Now let's say we did all those calculations and we said, okay, we got 2.19, uh, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 4, 3. So we did those calculations like we did over here and we, we raised 1.04 to the 20th power and that's what we got. If I wanted to get to this 44.99.98, I'm going to do something a little weird. I'm going to divide it backwards. I'm going to keep that number in there and divide by 98.60. Now that doesn't look anything like 44.9998, but see this button here, one over X, that's gonna flip it. And when it flips it, we get our answer. So it's a nice little trick that you can use if you if it makes sense to you. You know, so if you have a fraction that's upside down and you want to flip it up, flip it around, use that one over X. That always flips it around. So that's a nice way to, to do some of these problems. Okay, well, I am actually going to stop this video here because the next topic is a little bit different, so I want to not get it too merged up with this stuff. So we'll stop and see you in the next video.